The metacarpals, as you all know, are the short, long bones of the hand. They are surrounded by long and short tendons of the hand. The proximally, the CMC joints are, uh, the second and third CMC joints are absolutely immobile. So that you have to remember when you are treating the metacarpal fractures. And also important to remember is that the fourth and fifth uh, CMC joints are very mobile and mobility of these joints should be preserved for uh, strength and grasp. The heads of the metacarpals are aligned uh, or oriented in such a manner to form the transverse and longitudinal arches of the hand. Uh, uh, one must also remember the transverse fractures of the metacarpals angulate with apex dorsal. Spiral oblique fractures tend to rotate and shorten with time if not treated properly. And MP joint stiffness is a very disabling condition. With this brief introduction in mind and keeping these points in mind, I hand over the mic to Parag to introduce the first speaker. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, I welcome Dr. Kiran Ladkad, who is a hand surgeon practicing in South Bombay. Kiran, please uh, proceed. Good morning, chairpersons. Good morning, uh, respected conveners, my fellow colleagues and uh, mentors and uh, delegates. I thank uh, for this opportunity to talk on metacarpal head fractures at this event of Viroc Global 2021. Now, brief introduction about uh, metacarpal head fractures being these are almost all articular injuries and very rare inc incidents. Mode of injury is usually the axial loading or clenched fist injuries. Now, axial loading happens in, in the sec metacarpal second and third, whereas the clenched fist injuries are common in the sec second, third, and fourth metacarpals. Open wounds, if they are there, if these fractures are associated with open wounds, always suspect a fight bite injury. Index finger being the commonest metacarpal to get injured, that's being it's, it's a border finger and its uh, metacar uh, carpal metacarpal joint is fixed to the carpus as Dr. Patankar had mentioned earlier. Brief anatomical uh, introduction is the introsia are attached on, on both palmar and dorsal aspects of the, of the metacarpal shafts and uh, the, the, on, the, on the volar aspect then the, the flexors coming in, in, in the front. On the extensors uh, uh, and the lumbricals also originating from the FDP and going across the metacarpal head to the proximal phalanx. Uh, this picture is showing the met metacarpal heads in, in, the, in the alignment. This, uh, this patient has an injury on the, on the uh, ring and the little fingers, but this is how the knuckles should be seen uh, to, to assess the clinic, clinical presentation. Classification wise, these are the types of or various types of fractures of metacarpal head in pediatric age group, epiphyseal, usually it's a Salter Harris type 3 presentation. Ligamentous avulsions of the collateral ligaments arising from the metacarpal head. Osteochondral shear fractures are one, one common entity which can, uh, which can associate with the, with the metacarpal head fractures. Then are routine two-part fractures in different planes. Commutated fractures and open fractures are another uh, common entity. Boxer fractures usually are, uh, occur in fourth or fifth metacarpal heads. Fractures with substance loss uh, associated with open injuries and occult compression fractures which can be easily missed on routine x-rays leading to subsequent uh, vascular necrosis. Imaging this, this, uh, this picture, I've taken it from Rockwood and Greens which is our conventional textbook. On the left upper corner, it's a Brewerton view. Then the second and the third one are routine uh, X-rays for the thumb metacarpal and the other metacarpals on, on the lower right. On the right side on the lower corner, you can see a skyline view where, where the beam goes across the dorsal aspect of the proximal phalanx, which, which gives you the idea about the osteochondral shear fractures arising from the metacarpal head, which can be missed on an AP and a routine lateral or oblique projection. This is a Brewerton view I tried to depict in a, in a X-ray department where your fingers are lying flat on the X-ray table, X-ray uh, plate uh, rather, and the MCP, the metacarpophalangeal joints are flexed at around 60 degrees. The beam is projected ulnar to radial in around 15 degrees angle where you can see the metacarpal heads in, in an arch manner. This is the Brewerton view for assessing the fractures here. The skyline view, view as, as I said, uh, it's, it's projected along the dorsal aspect of the proximal phalanx. 
pardon me for the for the resolution here but you can see the metacarpal heads heads on the on the x-ray very clearly here now ct scans are are necessary when there is suboptimal visualization on the on the x-rays and where you need to understand the fracture geometry or anatomy in a, in a better manner treatment wise non operative versus operative now where to consider surgery non comminuted fractures where less than 20% of the articular surface involvement or less than 1 mm step off is there and highly comminuted or severely comminuted fractures where direct fixation is not amenable literature says they can be immobilized for around 2 to 3 weeks and aggressive hand therapy is essential you have to individualize the approach for each fracture pattern in case you consider surgery threaded or conventional regular k wires the threaded wires are better because there are certain fracture patterns where the frag if fragment is very small threaded k wires are are good handy implant tool interfragmentary screws or headless compression screws are are the important tools in the armamentarium approach wise dorsal volar or combined now volar approach through a1 pulley for the volar 50% of the articular surface is essential Uh, don't uh, don't get uh, frightened with the with the exposure be, uh, considering the digital nerves and the or the neurovascular bundles coming into play uh, routinely we do trigger finger uh, release so so to, through the same approach keeping aside the neurovascular bundles you can directly approach through a1 pulley and the metacarpophalangeal joint for the volar reduction combined approach is essential if the fracture geometry demands it these two are the challenging patterns in the metacarpal head fractures comminuted fractures where if they are closed and not amenable to fixation immobilize and aggressive hand therapy open you individualize as per the case merit as far as the open fractures you understand lavage the immediate lavage and debridement of the fractures is essential leave it open and delay the fixation till till the wound settles down So on an average you have good 2 to 3 weeks in hand uh, to to get the fixation right stiffness is the commonest as dr patankar had introduced already that's due to extensor adhesions collateral or capsular contracture incongruity of the articular surface mal union and epiphyseal arrest in a pediatric population is known complication here osteochondral graft arising from the non articular surface of the metacarpal head or the knee and small joint arthroscopy are the recent advances here to depict the cases here this is the index metacarpal the comminuted fracture arising from the radial condyle uh, now here because of the because of the void here we have taken an autograph from the distal radius and packing it here you can see it on the video here and this is the fixation with uh, with screws from the from the hand module and supplemented with a with a axial k wire to to get the get the smaller fragment right here and this is the fixation x ray and the follow up here this is follow up at 6 months this is another x ray which with this image i have taken it from from greens now headless compression screw for for fi fixing up the volar articular surface and this one from the hand clinic to uh, dorsally approached and a small headless compression screw here this is the next case i'm i'm scheduled to operate it sometime thank you everyone for kind attention